Sites, and I am excited to be here with you guys. Uh, this is going to be a really great webinar in terms of super helpful information to know how to take what you're doing on the internet to the next level, which means not losing out on the opportunities that are available. So uh, we've all had a chance to chat and catch up with each other, and I think we it's time for us to move on a little bit and talk a little bit about talk a little bit about presenters. And if you don't mind, anybody that's uh, watching along here, go ahead and put your phone on mute. But be ready to unmute because this is an interactive webinar where you're welcome to ask questions and give us feedback. So Andrew, I'm going to hand it off to you and let you talk about yourself a little bit. All right. Well, my name is Andrew Osborne, and I work at Clark Incorporated as a graphic and web designer and developer. Uh, Clark Incorporated is a marketing media services provider. That means we're kind of like a marketing hub for all your marketing needs and get you up to any aspect of your business marketing you may need. Uh, we particularly focus on website design and development, mobile and tablet apps and web marketing, and a good bit of traditional print and mail marketing as well. Cool. Well, you know, uh, what I do here at Relaunch You is provide inbound marketing services. I like to focus on the B2B companies, um, but not necessarily. It, uh, it depends if I like you a lot, right? <laughs> but inbound marketing, what is that? It is uh, internet marketing. Um, oh, I should tell you, here in Virginia Beach, we have jets. So, sorry, I don't know how to stop the uh, Army from the military, the Navy from protecting us. So, uh, I won't complain about it. But anyway, going back, internet marketing is what I specialize in in terms of getting found on the internet and nurturing relationships with clients and client conversion. So I partnered with Clark Incorporated when they said, hey, can we do this together? And I said, absolutely. And this is our second webinar together, right, Andrew? Because we have a lot of things in common. That's right. So yeah. cool. All right. I think that's, that's enough about us. Let's go into a little bit about what we have planned. All right, well, our agenda for today is to uh, answer several questions here. What do we mean by mobile-friendly or mobile website? It means different things to different people. Let's take your definition we'll be working from. And we'll be asking and answering the question, does mobile really matter when we already have a great website? You know, our website's working well, looks wonderful on my computer. Um, you know, I'm done, right? Well, maybe not. And then um, what should be different about a mobile site compared to just a desktop site or a normal website? Uh, some kind of related, some design considerations that are unique to mobile sites that you need to keep in mind. And then we'll look at uh, several examples of some good and some bad uh, mobile websites. And we'll look at uh, your website. We'll talk through some suggestions, some thoughts we have at um, you know, your own sites where you can improve what's working well, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, the, uh, I have brought today, and I'm, I'm assuming everybody else has too, hopefully, a couple mobile devices. I have my mini iPad, which I realized had 10% power when as soon as I pulled it out, I was like, great, so i got to charge it. And my smartphone. So we want to be looking at multiple different versions of the same thing. Okay, well, mobile... And for those of right? you who may not have a device at hand, uh, we will be showing an emulator on screen as well, so you can see okay. for us as well. Cool. All right, so getting started. What is mobile friendly? Well, first of all, it does not mean that everything displays the same. If your website looks basically the same on a mobile phone as it does on your desktop, that's actually not a mobile friendly site. Some people think uh, consistency is good, and you know, consistency is good. But you don't want it to be identical because it's so different working on a website with a mouse and keyboard and a full-size monitor compared to doing it on a very small, narrow screen with a touchpad and thick fingers. It's just you don't want it to be the same. What it does mean is mobile visitors receive and experience customized and tailored just for them. You keep in mind uh, what they're probably doing. You know, using a mobile phone, they're not sitting at their desk. They're probably you know, on the go, they want to get something in real quick, you know, maybe they just heard about you and want to check into you a little bit for a time where they come back later for more in-depth exploration, or maybe they're a current customer who just wants to get something done real quick, 
or if your retail site maybe you just want to place a real fast order and the keywords are quick fast they're on the go yeah I just want to add yeah, that, add that. It's, oh I've got an echo here okay we're cool uh, the um, just because someone can visit your website on their phone and then they can do the little expand and contract thing, that is not a mobile-friendly site. And, and it amazes me, the people who think that that is okay. And, and maybe it was a few years ago. It's not okay anymore. Consumers and their attitudes about what they expect are changing. And just being sort of acceptable or getting away with it isn't good enough anymore if we're serious about generating business. I'm losing you a bit there, Margaret. Yes, was that a question? Well, the, your audio cut out for me. I don't know if cut out for anyone else. Oh, okay. Well, we can go on. Let's talk you about your part. audio's out. Everybody's audio is out. All right. Well, I think we got that taken care of. Everybody's now. audio is out. You can. Can you hear us now? I can hear you guys. Okay, I think it's just a really slow, uh, what do you call it, like uh, lapse of time. There's like a, there's a little bit of a lag, so just be ready for that. All right, well, let's pose a question to um, you, the attendees right now. What do you think about does a mobile-friendly website really matter? Yeah, I think it really matters. People have to be able to see my things as um, where they are and share them where they are. Yeah, I would imagine, Rebecca, you know, you're talking about your stuff when you're even person to person or they hear it from a friend and they're like, wow, she does that? Yeah, I'd like to see. They're not going to wait to go home and take a look to see what kind of wine glasses you paint because they've got, you know, a wedding coming right. up in a couple of weeks. They're like, exactly. show me right now, pull up your iPad, and let's take a look. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. and you personally are Excuse me one right? second. This is a customer. Oh, okay. Hello, uh, All right. Well, I think that we, we know that it really does matter. Let's think yeah, those are some. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you there, Marguerite. Um, yeah, some real good points, really. Um, Many times, I imagine a mobile site may be your first impression on a client. You may not even realize it, but they uh, just heard about you, just want to check you out. They go on mobile. They don't wait and visit, you know, to see the full experience. They go on their mobile, and if you don't impress them then, they're probably not going to come back for any more in-depth exploration. All right, and uh, let's get another opinion on this. Um, these are some statistics from Forbes, a study of over 500 senior level business executives. And there's some really amazing numbers here. 68% of the surveyed business executives had made more than $1,000 in business purchases on mobile devices by last, in the last six months. That is including tablet, but that's not desktop, that's not laptop, mobile devices. And number one reason for not making the purchase was a website is hard to see, read, or navigate. As you're going to see illustrated later, when we start taking a look at sites on the emulator and everything, um, a site that displays on mobile exactly like it does on desktop fits the definition of hard to see, read, and navigate. And that, based on the survey, can be lost business. And he's 73% confirmed that bad experience makes them less likely to engage, and 68% said they're more likely to go to a competitor's website after a poor mobile experience. So there really isn't any doubt. It really matters. This is just really amazing statistics. And, and these are speaking from people that are high-level executives. They don't have time to play. And uh, they're there to do business and get things done. Now, now maybe they are different in a world from other types of consumers, but other types of, of consumers are just as picky for other reasons. They've got the baseball game to attend. They've got the friends coming over in just a minute. They want to be able to do exactly the same thing, get what they're looking for, find the information they need. And if it doesn't happen, that company is discounted for what they could be, what, what they really could offer. And it may mean that they'll never give them another try. 
So this is this is some scary stuff, that, but we know what we need to do, right? So let's take a look at that. All right, so we've said a couple times now it shouldn't be identical to your desktop. So what should it be? Well, it should be easy to read on small portrait displays. Now, I say portrait. Some people, you know, load up websites on their phone and landscape, you know, held long ways with very wide and not very tall. But most people um, on a mobile phone will load a website held vertically. So you have very narrow width. That's very different from a typical widescreen laptop or desktop monitor. Tablets, that's a bit more 50-50 whether or not it'd be loaded up in portrait or landscape, but phones you're looking mostly portrait. It should be uh, very easy to navigate by touch. It's very common, a lot of websites to have where you move your mouse cursor like over a menu and then it expands outward. That's called a hover navigation. You hover the mouse cursor over the menu item. Well, on mobile, that doesn't always work well because you really can't you know, hover a finger. You have to click. And if a click takes you somewhere instead of actually expanding out the menu, whole pages of your website may be completely inaccessible on mobile. So pay attention to that. Make sure that nothing requires hover. If it's you know enhanced, fine, but it should not be required. And everything should be very streamlined. We talked before. They're probably you know, not being very patient. They're not waiting to go to their laptop or desktop. They want to find out about you and find out quick. So everything should be very streamlined, very quick to load. They're probably on um, you know cellular data connection. May not be the fastest. Very quick to skim through. Quick to get in. Do what they need to do and get back out and move on. Which part of that is showing really only what's relevant to someone on a phone or tablet. If there's a poverty website, like uh, well, on our own website, we have a file upload where we can, you can send us your print files and all. Uh, that's not really part of our mobile website because people aren't going to be sending files on mobile phone. You want to remove clutter like that, save that for the desktop, streamline the mobile to just what matters to the mobile users. And make sure everything works. Uh, particularly Adobe Flash, it can be very fancy, look very nice, but a lot of mobile browsers don't support it. And some other more advanced scripting uh, things on websites don't work. So be sure to test that, make sure everything functions. The, uh, you know, a, a trap that a lot of people commonly fall into, and I find this true for myself, we have a responsive website and we think, okay, we're good. We're good across all the different size screens. But right here, what you just pointed out, Andrew, is that's not necessarily true. People could still have trouble with using the menu functions that they're not uh, capable of, of tapping on them because of the hover piece. I mean, I've experienced that where I've visited a website and I got frustrated. I was like, I just want to go to the next page. That's all I want to do. And I couldn't. Uh, and um, the part about being showing what's relevant, when people are on their smartphones, they don't want to have everything on your website. They just need what they need. They just want to have what they need for that action that they want to accomplish. A really good example of this, too, is uh, when you're a local business, people often want to use your website as a way to contact you immediately. And that should be popping right up in the front. Uh, for other businesses that are more um, informational services related, if you're blogging regularly, your blog needs to be really easy to read on mobile devices. And then people can take action. Let's say that there's something you want them to download, so you're capturing contact information. It must be very easy for them to fill out that contact form, because if it's really big or huge, then the likelihood is that they're not going to do that. And calls to action today are even getting more sophisticated, where you can literally hit yes, no button, and then they follow up through email which is an ideal format for uh, mobile versions that we're displaying uh, of websites. Right. Uh, some design considerations, getting a little technical here, but a, a good first question to ask when considering getting a mobile site or saying you're doing one you may have is should it be a responsive site or be a separate mobile optimized version? Now, let me explain what those are. A uh, responsive site is a website. It's all the same content, it's all the same piece. But when shown on a large screen, it looks one way. When the windows uh, shrunk down to a smaller screen, it may look another way. Shrunk down even smaller, it may collapse down even further. It's all tied to the same content. It's just moving things around, resizing things, changing the visual styling to make it work in a smaller size. 
a mobile optimized site is almost like a whole second website just for mobile. It's a good pick if you uh, have very different content you want to serve to mobile because it's not any real connection. You make a change to the uh, desktop site, that's for the desktop, make a change to the mobile, and that's for the mobile. If it's like that, that would be mobile optimized. And that one, instead of responding to the screen size, the website detects, okay, is this being accessed from like an Android browser or an iPhone browser or an iPad or is this a desktop? And so it's up the right version based on what browser they're using to view it. Two different strategies, we'll see examples of both as we go further in. And reiterating again, you have to design for both wide and narrow. For phones, mostly narrow, but tablets could be either or, and sometimes people view phones on a wide display. So be aware of that. And then test on as many as you can, because there'll be differences between the way Android shows things, between the way uh, Apple, iPhone, iPad shows things, and even different browser options on the same device, like the default Android browser or the Chrome browser. Can, things can look different, so you want to test. You know, a lot of people, I think, Andrew, uh, hesitate about going to be mobile optimized. And the whole trend towards just doing responsive websites is really popular because it's one website seems to solve my problems. But is that, you know, really true? That's what we're asking here. Because as a small business to pay for two websites, so that's what it seems like initially. But in reality, we have to think about how much of our traffic is coming from mobile devices. And if you haven't looked that up in your Google Analytics account, I suggest right after this webinar to go do that. Because if you've got 30% of your traffic coming in through a mobile device, we need to seriously be thinking about what is their experience, even in, in, in relationship to what I do. Now, a lot of local businesses, they tend to be small business. But I just mentioned a minute ago that for local businesses, uh, often for them to have a mobile optimized site is better because they have to have some very unique information to help people find them very quickly and, and, and uh, then so that they can do a transaction with them locally. Because they're just trying to figure out where they're, where are they in the city, what are they serving on the menu, you know, what's the latest special, that kind of stuff for, for local businesses. So, can I interject um, here for a second? Oh, sure. My web hosting company offers both for the same price. That's good. You know, mobile optimized site doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to cost a lot more. It just means that we have to plan and look at the return of investment on it. And exactly. that's where you can make wiser decisions. But exactly. I think, uh, Andrew, you were going to add to that? And, and thank you for that comment, Rebecca. That's very helpful. I'm sure Andrew could speak to the actual, a little bit more technical means of what that looks like. I'm sure. Well, you mentioned your hosting provider. Hosting, yeah, will be the same, and really even cost generally is probably about the same. It's very different in how the website's built. So if you're um, like trying to download a WordPress theme, some things may be made more for responsive, some more for mobile optimized. Or if you're hiring a developer, that's a decision they'll have to make during development and go one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, uh, I think we have one more slide, and then we're going to take a look at some actual websites, right? That will make all of it much more clear than mud <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Well, <laughs> while we're on a, the topic of websites, a similar one is mobile apps. I'm, I'm surprised how many people um, ask, you know, what's the difference? You know, people don't think I should get one or should I get the other. So it's kind of a related topic. And really, they work well together. Now, neither one's a replacement for the other. Apps have one purpose, websites have another purpose. I got a couple more statistics here from that same uh, Forbes survey we talked about earlier. At 41% um, of those surveyed said that mobile apps, specifically apps, made them more likely to buy or engage. And 26% said even if they already like a brand or a product, they are less likely to engage without a mobile app. Now, the main focus of this webinar is mobile websites, but if you want more information about apps, that's what our next webinar will be coming up in July. So it's a little teaser for you guys there. Marguerite, do you have any comments or you want to move on to websites? I would say it's probably blowing the mind right now about mobile website, responsive website, mobile apps, but uh, I think we're going a good direction. And uh, we'll, let's go look at some examples. And um, I think that will uh, definitely share, show us some great possibilities. 
And in, in worst case scenarios, sometimes it's not just what's possible. Sometimes it's just making sure that we fix what's not working well so that we don't lose opportunity. And rudder mills, I like this as a good example. And I love how you can put it on one screen. That's great, Andrew. Uh, and then if anybody wants to pull it up on their devices while we're looking at it, go ahead and do that. You can see that they have, well, I'll throw it out there and you can answer it in your head. Is this a responsive website that they have for their smartphone, or is it a mobile optimized website? A or B? And if you guessed B, that would be the correct answer. Now, if I went on my iPad, which I do have down here, let me see, I have to unlock it. Oh, no, I guess I deleted it on here. You can see that the responsive screen plays on the mini iPad. The mobile site is just for phones. And you can see it says, call now, text us now, free consultation. This is a law firm for personal injury. They want someone that gets hit by a car and their neck is killing them right at that moment to give them a call. They don't want them to scan around the website and then fill out that contact form. They want uh, on the phone, because they know no one's going to wait to get home, but they're going to pull out their phone and try to find an attorney right then, possibly. What did you see, Andrew? Well, this is an excellent example of streamlining to what your mobile users are going to be using your website for. You really have to ask yourself, what's their situation going to be? What are they trying to accomplish? In this case, you mentioned like maybe just in an accident, they want to call, they want to text, they want to get in contact. You can see on the uh, home page here, they've got several paragraphs of information, videos, latest news. None of that's on the home page of the mobile site. They streamlined it as much as they could to be as targeted as they could. And that's the kind of thing you want to see in a mobile site. Now, one thing they did unfortunately not do ideally, and let me uh, switch this to an iPad to show you guys. Um, I'll give Emilio just a second while I uh, head over to it. They did really good on their uh, mobile phone site, but they kind of left out iPad a little bit. Um, the iPad site, it displays okay. It seems good. But remember what I mentioned earlier about hover navigation. They forgot about hover navigation. I try to go like to our attorneys and say, let's look up Everett. I go to our attorneys, I tap, and then suddenly it jerked me to another page. It immediately took that as a link to go to this page. It didn't bring me down to the other options. I want to go to workers' compensation. I can't get there. It pops up a split second, and then I'm off to another page. That's have a navigation not working properly. They really should fix that on the iPad version. Okay. But that phone version is a good example. I think we have another another lawyer, right? The reason why I will have to confess is because I just worked recently with uh, a law firm and was doing some comp research on their competitors, and so I saw all of these different lawyers were doing with their websites. It was, uh, it was very helpful. Now this one here, Calcis and Nackman, I'm sure that if you live in the state of Virginia, you can't forget who the hammer guy is. And he's about you know tearing up those people that hurt you type of deal. That's uh, Lowell the Hammer Stanley. Calvin's enactment is, is Napoleon oh, Solo. He has a gavel, though. That's what got me. <laughs> you can see that here they have um, a mobile optimized website for their smartphone. And what's interesting, I thought I saw it on my phone. I'm not sure if it's showing up here on the uh, this uh, uh, representation of a phone. Um, they have an app, too in addition to this, and they say, hey, you know, you could just use our app, which their app is really smart. Oh, there it is. Oh, wait, is this, Andrew, is this the um, iPad view or is this the smartphone view? Oh, I think you're talking with your mute on. Oh, it looks like it should be your smartphone. Sorry about that. Uh, I had it set to the wrong size iPhone, the three and a half inch instead of the four inch. It's, you know, they're both iPhones, though. And there it is. Okay, then it's not rendering correctly on that screen, because I know when I look at it on my mobile device, it's slightly different, and they highlight right at the top, download our app. And the reason why they want people to use the app is the app is, it's, this is really smart. 
the app has a tool in it for if you're ever in an accident, it tells you exactly all the data you need to record from the event and the people involved and you know what steps to do next and things like that. So I could see, which matter of fact, I'm surprised I haven't downloaded this on my own phone, that being a very valuable app to have when that emergency happens. And as soon as as soon as someone has that problem, they go right to the app and then you know who's next for them to contact. Of course it's Calpus and Nackman. Um, but what we're talking about here is they have the app, they have the mobile uh, website for um, smartphones, and then they have a responsive website for the computer and for tablets. Yeah, I find it very uh, interesting. It's a case of needing to test on various devices, I guess, because uh, the iPhone emulator, you know, it's way down on the page, and on my own uh, Android phone, uh, I see it the same way, but my Breach phone shows different, so it must be some kind of odd browser, something, some error in their code is not displaying properly on all devices, so the majority of testing, <laughs> that's a good reason for it. Um, but yeah, it really illustrates the response, so you can see here that uh, if I resize the window down, you can see things moved around, things are shrinking, things are changing, and actually, um, I'll be <laughs> not to be contradictory, but this is actually a responsive site all the way. Because you go down enough, it goes to the same as the mobile version. They're actually not doing mobile optimized, but it looks like it. it each one can look kind of like the other. It's more about how it, it's actually done in the code and behind the scenes and the way that the uh, uh, the content is structured than is what it actually looks like. So this is actually a responsive site all the way. Because it adapts as I resize the screen, as you can see. Oh, you know what? I got to mix it with another attorney. That was my fault. <laughs> oh, that's all right. We have a couple more examples, right? And then we'll start looking at uh, some of the people who registered for the event. We'll give us look at their website for that. So let's do a couple more other examples. So all right. A couple more other examples. Well, here's a website it's called IGN, and it's a um, very busy site. It's a news site for games and movies and entertainment in general. And you can see on their desktop site, they've got a lot of stuff going on. They got the slideshow, they got the animated ads, they got all kinds of articles. Look in the menu, they've got a complicated menu here with a lot of links, another menu here, more stuff up here. It's a very complicated site. But on the uh, mobile version, they've done an excellent job of streamlining it. They didn't drop a lot of content. Because they don't know if you're going there for video games or a TV show or music or movies. They don't know what you're going there for. But they still have a structure in a way. It's very easy to see, very easy to read. It's not overbearing. Like, if the desktop site was just shrunk down to a small screen, you couldn't navigate it. But these uh, links to articles and videos, they're nice, they're big, they're easy to uh, press, even on a touch screen. And you may ask, well, where's the navigation? It's like they dropped off most of the site. They got a nice little slide-out navigation here in the corner where all that big, complicated navigation is its own little section. doesn't crowd everything else out. It fits in very nice, very neat. It's a very well-done, simplified mobile site without compromising on content. I like it. Well, this company is obviously based on uh, completely on its web presence. They know they have to do it right if they want to be able to make money with what they do, and I think they do a great job. It's uh, easy for people to make decisions on what they want to. Uh, it's easy for people to find what they need, or and or to click on things that are of interest to them without getting overwhelmed or distracted. I love the next one, Panera. I know it's a big company; they've been around for a while, but uh, they're a great job of. Um, visually being very attractive, which that's why we eat there, right? We all know their food looks good and it does taste pretty good, so but the look, that's a big deal. And you can see here too that yeah, they nice have cut thing here, that doing. They have cut Oh sorry. Oh, it's okay. Uh, oh, go ahead, Andrew. Uh, go ahead. Uh, first. You go ahead. Well a nice thing that Panera's doing is taking advantage of some of the extra stuff you can do on mobile. You may have noticed it flashed up there real quick, you know, can we use your current location? You don't even have your mobile site tied into the phone's uh, GPS to figure out where they are roughly. Like in this case, it's showing me the nearest cafe. Now it's showing San Francisco. You may wonder, well, that's not working right. That's because of the emulator. It, it, 
assumes I'm in Apple headquarters because it's an Apple emulator. But if it, you go down your actual phone, it should show you the nearest cafe to where you are. That's not feature be very useful on desktop, but on mobile, very nice. You not apply to all small businesses, but there's usually some way you can enhance on mobile that may tie in to the GPS, or we saw click to text or click to call. There's opportunities out there for mobile that should be taken advantage of. Now here we see again the uh, slide out menu. It can be very simple, but they did not job prioritizing. In IGN, everything in the menu was on the side out. Here, they figure the top things that someone's going to do when visiting their site is wanting to browse the menu, locate a cafe, or go ahead and order. Then they also are pulling the benefits of the sign up and sign in. So they put those front and center, easy to see, immediate, but in case they were wrong, in case you're going there for some other reason, then you can go the added level to see some of the other stuff they have in there about like contact and about and my Panera and that kind of thing. So that's a nice way of sectioning it off into high priority and kind of lower priority. Again, thinking about what people visiting are going to want to do. You know, we forgot to mention too, I think it was on one of the prior examples, they had on there, I think it was the first one we looked at, they had on there the option at the bottom of the screen actually visit the real website. So their mobile optimized site was, was I think relatively small, probably just two or three pages. Did you chuck around in there? I mean, it looks like it's just honestly a landing page right here for these calls to action. And then it proceeds a full website, which is on a responsive um, you know, system. So you can still look at it with relative ease, even though you can't maybe navigate it as well. Uh, so that's always an option to keep in mind. But you know, I forgot, Andrew, we found a really great e-commerce site. And I think that's definitely worth taking a look at. People buy stuff on mobile devices all the time. I bought a pair of shoes the other day. I was shocked. I, I was like, I cannot believe I just answered a Facebook ad for a pair of shoes, signed up, and purchased them all on my phone in my backyard sitting next to the fire. I was like, that will never happen to me, and it did. It's just it's too easy these days. If you allow it to be, it can happen. So we've got Skinny Ties here as a great example of a boutique e-commerce site and uh, how they're managing uh, the sizes of screens out there in, benefit, uh, in reflection of how they run their business. Andrew, go ahead. Tell us what you think. Well, this is an example of a site that is easy to tell what uh, people are probably going to want to do. They want to browse your wares, browse your collection, and be able to place an order. And they, again, tailor their site to that end. So you, Immediately you have up here the collection, you search by collection or search by tie color or the width, fabric, pattern. And you may remember before about the drop down menus that didn't work well on mobile. There's nothing wrong with drop down menus. The problem is making sure that it works without hover. So over here, hover it works, but over here, tapping works. You just have to make sure you don't have to hover. There's nothing wrong with drop downs. But I really like how they've done their product pages. So if I go in, say, the silk ties, I can see all the ties, all nice and big, easy to read, don't have to zoom in and pan around. If I click on one, they make this look very nice. A nice large image um, on phone, and then nice easy to read description, and you can easily see these big buttons to up the quantity, lower the quantity. They were thinking of touch, of fingers. That's how people are going to be ordering on this on mobile. If you go to their site on the uh, desktop, they use a similar design, but I imagine even on desktop, they were thinking, what's the mobile site going to be? We want large buttons to be able to handle things. Think with people's fingers, changing the fabric, the width, seeing all that, nice and large. The chair icons are kind of close together for fingers, but for the most part, they planned this very well. So they plan their responsive website to work very well on a smartphone. Is that what we're seeing here, Andrew? Uh, I think it's responsive. Let's see. Yeah, if I uh, shrink it down, you can see it adapts. And they've actually got it nice in between here, where the uh, picture's on the left and the big, and on a small, like maybe tablet, it's in the center, but the lower part is still like the large site and then a mobile. So they've done like three stages. 
Good. So they, they really chose carefully their platform for this to make sure that not just visually did it appear for better for mobile devices, but functionally it changed depending on the size of the width of the screen. I really like that. And I think that sets us up well to go look at our first website from uh, our participants here. And I think, Rebecca, are you ready to take a look at yours? Sure. Would you like to share with us your thoughts, what you like about your site, maybe what you think could be better, or what you have questions about? Throw that at us, and then we'll give you our thoughts. Um, I'm just wondering, on the mobile site, it all seems to work just fine for me, and then I think it looks okay. Um, it's got the phone number in two places, which is I didn't realize before just now. I, I have to admit, I don't really have a mobile device, so it's hard for me to see. Um, oh, okay. But the one on the left is the iPad version or the desktop version? Uh, that's the normal desktop browser. Right. Right. Um. Um. I don't know what I'd change because I don't have very much experience with mobile. Okay. Well, good. That's why you're here, right? You're going to be right. much more experienced by the end of all of this. <laughs> well, I could definitely say, and I think this is obvious too, when you look at the mobile version of your website, because it's a responsive template that you're using with this WordPress site, uh, they put the menu right at the top, which, you know, that kind of seems to make sense if I want to move around. but. It, if we looked at the other examples of websites, what they did really well was they had a very nice banner or picture, something that was engaging, visually pleasing to the user first. And the navigation was then either at the top as a drop down to go deeper in the site, or at the bottom they had these priority of uh, calls to action they wanted them to follow. Now what's interesting is that slider that's on your main website, it doesn't uh -huh. transition all to this smaller screen here. And that just mm -hmm. has to do with the uh, function of the, the setup. Um, could you mm -hmm. scroll down, Andrew, on the, on the mobile device? I guess I could look at it on my phone, too. I think I pulled it up. And I still have to make one more label because they changed the shipping address last second. Oh, I think Rebecca is. She's a multitasker. Are you multitasking, Rebecca? <laughs> yeah. Well, my shipping guy just got here. Oh, he did? Oh. Have, yeah. <laughs> and if I don't ship, the register doesn't ring. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you get the problem to the customer. So if you click on one of these pictures, which right now there isn't any button that has like a, you know, order here or buy now, so it's kind of assumed you have to touch the picture, okay? It's not horrible. People figure it out, but again, we're, we're having to, people are having to stretch here a little bit. And when they go through the order process, um, there is quite a bit of customizing options that are available. Now, there's nothing yes. wrong with that. That, that's part of that's the whole purpose of what you do is customize hand-painted glasses. You have a template that they can follow and they can make all these you know, variations or choices. Uh, how does that work there with making the selection, Andrew? I see you're tapping around. So when you've got drop-down options, it looks like that's a lot easier. Having to type in information would be a little harder, but it doesn't look like you have to type in too much. You know, what do you want the top to say? What do you want the base to say? Um, you know, that how many people do this on their phone? What I would be curious about, and I would Not want to a lot of people do it on their phone. Yeah, I'm wondering how many cart abandonments occur versus on mobile phone versus computer, just because of the length of time that it takes them to complete the order. And is there some sort of way that we can make sure that we've captured their information to invite them back if they just abandoned it on their phone? And I think you told me that they have to be a registered user. So uh, I can. Uh, uh, it's thirty dollars a month extra to get that information. Oh, okay. All right. So that's and definitely since the whole enough. site costs forty, thirty is a lot to spend. It might be worth it for a few months. So you that have we have a clue. Up. You have to look at it, though, really not as a relative to each other. And that's kind of a trick of the mind. I've, I've been reading lately about this in uh, psychology. So I'm not, 
I think it's true what you say that makes a lot of sense, Rebecca, on the face of it, but if we actually add it to number value in dollars, like lost sales, maybe $30 isn't that big a deal. And we don't know well, that until the numbers are there, though. It, that's well, we that's have. why I'm saying maybe it's worth it for a couple of months to see if it's worth it to have that as a permanent expense. I think, yeah, we would want to do a little bit of, like, uh, testing. You're right, I agree. And I'm hoping we would know that before you would even decide to use it, honestly. It seems to me that the numbers could be determinable ahead of time. But uh, let's get Andrew. Through analytics, you mean? Oh, I'm sorry? Through Google Analytics? Uh, through Google Analytics and through the analytics available on your shopping cart. Now, I don't know for <laughs> sure. I think we're going to have to combine the two pieces of data together and hopefully it gets us a picture that's clear. Because there are two separate forms of analytics, it's never, we can never say with 100% confidence, but, but that's part of where you have to become a detective. And, uh, right. But it's worth it. And it's, it's just about checking the numbers. Okay. So great, great question. Andrew, what do you think besides you liking them wine glasses? Besides <laughs> well, uh, let's see. let me go back to the uh, home page first. So immediately I'm reminded actually of the Panera example. You've got a menu here, very obvious, presumably what people are most likely to do. And then for other options, you've got the pullout. But wait a second. Birthdays, custom, holidays, just for fun. Birthdays, custom. It's the same thing repeated. But this one has more. That um, to me seems a little odd. I don't know if it's a different way you can configure that. Uh, it just seems a bit disconcerting, I guess. I guess it's kind of superfluous, and on a mobile device, you know, you want as much as you can in a small space. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's a little odd. Uh, and you mentioned the um, double phone number, so mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going to mention that, but you did. Um, what Marguerite said about a large image to really catch people's attention, that would be good. Maybe um, become some kind of either the slideshow or maybe uh, some kind of colorful banner treatment that incorporates your logo and the phone number to replace this whole oh, excuse me, section at the top, maybe. Okay. But, okay. Um, it's a very good, very functional website. It allows people to do what they need to do. Uh, it's very nice that it does figure out to zoom and pan around and all that. That's all very good. Um, I feel like this is a little... I guess dull looking. It's not very enticing visually. Yeah, you know, I'm mm -hmm. a graphic designer, mm -hmm. so I think visually. Right. And, uh, right. You know, seeing this, it's um, the white background, the gray lettering. I'm in my mind comparing it back to what we saw um, with skinny ties, and you know, both retail, kind of similar. And see here, they got different backgrounds, uh, different fonts. They got no change in background. It's got a spot of color added to it. It's just a lot more exciting look to it. And you may not think that you know, anything else is just window dressing. That doesn't matter. But you'd be surprised how much a few visual treats can really change people's behavior and how likely they are to stick through a uh, arduous process of all those options and everything. It really is amazing what can be accomplished with just some visual treats. Okay. Of course, okay. you don't have a mobile device. It makes it very difficult to adjust too much. But that's well, I don't know if a help of a web developer or something like that may assist you. Okay. Okay. Well, let's take a look at Joseph's uh, website, remodelingmadeeasy.com. And Joseph, I uh, I don't know if you can speak to him or not. Yeah, I'll give you a second. Tell us what you like about your website. Um, some things um, that you're planning on changing that you'd like to change, and any questions you have. So let's see. I'm going to put the thing in there for the chat. Okay, well, while you're doing that, I'll go ahead and give my thoughts then. Um, this is an example of a mobile site that isn't really mobile. It displays on the mobile phone, but it's basically the same as a desktop site. And, uh, you know, it's, it can work. It's functional. People can read this if they, you know, like zoom on in close and move around, pan around. 
that's making people work for it. And a website that makes you work for it is not one that tends to leave the best impression on visitors. That's one of the main problems of not having a mobile site. It's cheaper to kind of skip that. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to move my talk over. Uh, it, it'd be cheaper to uh, you know kind of skip on the mobile and just concentrate on desktop. And you know, for most businesses, desktop probably should be the top priority. Once you have that down, you really do need to pay attention to the mobile side. Uh, it, I do like, from a mobile standpoint, these uh, menu items. They look like they're just pure text. Actually, I click on it, you can kind of see it highlights a larger area. Those are actually larger buttons. That's a good thing for people with large fingers on a small device trying to navigate. That's a very good thing from a mobile standpoint, but it doesn't look like there's much else that's been done. So, Andrew, you mentioned something interesting that that the remodeling made easy site is not optimized for mobile. Did I hear you? Did I hear you right? Yeah, uh, not showing that way on my Android phone or the. I'm looking okay. it up on my phone right now. It's it's responsive to my tablet. I do remember it's noticing. I think it's a uh, home story site that is. Um, you got this large tag, but this one is. Um, it's got a few things that display kind of odd about it. But it looks like the main site is not. Um, so we we actually had that built on WordPress. Does WordPress have that option to optimize for mobile? And, and be responsive. Be responsive. It's connected to your template. Some templates will be uh, mobile optimized, some will be responsive, some will be neither. It really depends on what WordPress template you're using. WordPress is capable of all those, but not every template is capable of it. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, what was that? No, I was just reiterating what you were saying. Um, that WordPress is responsive, and 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 can be mobile. So that's good to know. The uh, this is what I'm looking at it on my phone, and I'm looking at it on my tablet, and it comes across pretty nice on the tablet. I think it's just because it's larger, but on my phone, it's definitely not doing the responsive piece. Um, so, like Andrew said. Uh, maybe this particular theme, I mean, hopefully it didn't misrep misrepresent that it was responsive, or maybe it's just not working on my version of my phone. I've got a Galaxy, Samsung Galaxy in a Chrome browser. I don't know if that's what part of the issue is, but, uh, but I would just add an extra note here, too. You guys have got a super-duper blog. I like that. Five bathroom remodeling tips that increase your home value. If you're sending this stuff out in email to people, which I imagine you are, because you've got a subscriber, you know, sign up right here, that kind of stuff, uh, people are going to check their emails on their phone, and uh, and they're going to go right to the website to read it, and then they won't read it because it's not going to be easy to read on their phone. <laughs> and we certainly wouldn't want that. So, um, uh oh, I hope we didn't uncover a problem here for you, Joseph. Or no, actually, a little bit more. No, I, I would like to speak with you a little further, maybe offline, because we're actually at the at the moment we're we're looking to rebuild the website. Oh, okay. Great. All right, that sounds like a plan. Well, I, I mean, I like what you guys have content-wise, and your blog's really nice. I'm always it takes a little bit to impress me with the blog, so just to let you know that, that's good. <laughs> well, I can't I can't take all the credit. We actually hired a company to do that for us, so we're, we are happy oh, okay. with the with the, um, with the results. Uh, I think the next step is just to uncover whether or not this was optimized um, for mobile. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Do we have another example we want to look at here, Andrew? I think that, well, I saw, um, uh, what's her name? It was here like a few minutes ago. I don't know if she still is. She was with the county. It was Mary Pascal. She got on late and then got off. Well, I do have the county site here. Okay. Well, why don't we just hit on her website really quick? Okay, and well, why don't we just hit on her website really quick? And
you know, this one, I don't know what uh, freedom they have to differ from the main Campbell County page. I don't know Wish she was here to answer that question. But. Do you want me to go on my thoughts or do you want to talk about Marguerite? Oh, sure. Well, I think it's a great example of a government website, and they are backwards about five to eight years in everything Internet-wise. Uh, and it's kind of sad because especially if they're trying to promote the rec centers that are available in the county and people are trying to look up that information on their phone, and they are. They're trying to find out where these rec centers are located, what kind of services they provide, what are some of the regulations in terms of participating in those centers. Uh, and and it's very hard to do that right now on a smartphone. So um, it just this just limits the community's ability to uh, really access the information that they need to act on it. Now, how much does it impact people's participation? That's hard to say, but we definitely know from a consumer uh, behavior in general in the world of um, retail and so forth, it makes a huge difference. And there's no reason why that wouldn't transfer here. What do you think, Andrew? You know, if a website looks all right on a tablet, it's not customized for tablet, but it's serviceable, but the mobile, you really can't read it. I actually should have been thinking this uh, emulator is not really a true representation because it shows it a good bit larger than actual phone screen. That depends on your model. If you're watching this on a laptop, it may be more accurate. But uh, a more accurate display might even be more like, um, you know, that size or so. And no one's going to be able to read it without really you know, zooming in tight and panning around, and I can't even finish the line without panning over, and I go back, you know, kind of like a typewriter trying to read it. And um, that's something you really want to avoid, you really need to avoid. Or many people would just move on. Um, a mobile version that's, uh, like, styled differently, larger font size, uh, increase font size on the uh, sidebar too much, and that'll be really why I take up a lot of screen real estate, so maybe move uh, some of this to the top, maybe some less important stuff to the bottom, get it like a one column format. That way you make the text nice and large, you don't have to, you know, go back and forth like a typewriter and everything. So else I noticed that uh, you uh, can't readily see on the emulator, but if I get down here to the contact us, um, you can see the phone number here is blue. That's a link I could uh, tap on it and if there's a real phone, place the call. Emulator doesn't work that way, but the problem is uh, if you go here on Android, ah, sorry, if you go here on Android, that's just normal text. What it is is uh, Apple with iOS, the iPhones, the iPads, they'll find phone numbers with it thinks are phone numbers and make them clickable so you could tap and call. That's really good, but Android doesn't do that. And what really should be done here is actually defined within the website code that this is a phone number. And then everywhere it'll be clickable and can immediately call whether you're on an Android phone or an iPhone or whatever. But that's only something I would uh, fix. I can't illustrate it here, but anyone has an Android phone, you go there, you'll see it's not clickable. At least not with uh, the default browser. It seems to me then that this is a of a website that would really benefit from a mobile optimized site because then we're not talking about going through the rigmarole of having a whole new website for the government site because it gets into the complexities of contracting and you know uh, procurement and all this and that. But if uh, Rex, the rec centers just want to do separate something separate for themselves, they could do that, or maybe they even need to just go the direction of an app, and uh, that way they can solve a lot of problems that currently exist right now with this setup. Do we want to look at one more site, you think, Andrew, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up? We're closing in on time, but maybe we can get one more in really quick. What's a good one? What do you think? Oh, well, I was just going to ask you that question. Um, let's see. Let's take a look at Ronald Mallon. Um, I got some interesting okay. comments on oh. this one here. So, Margaret, I guess you know more about uh, his business than... I do. And do you know, can you give one down what he does real quick? Sure. Uh, Ronald is uh, a coach and a change advocate. He goes into companies. I say, I guess coach is not a good word. It's more like a consultant. 
he goes into companies and helps them experience in a positive way change that moves them forward. It helps them, um, he helps people navigate change. He helps people navigate change from a career that they're in currently into a new career. So he's a philosopher, I think is a great dis description of him, and a very much of a thought leader. And uh, you can see those uh, mentoring, keynote speaking. Uh, it's, he's an author. So these are all very common elements of uh, someone that is independently employed, and they make their living from doing this, all these different components. And their website's huge, because their website tells everything who they are, and it's the first step that people go to when they're deciding, hmm, we need a keynote speaker. Hmm, what is this consultant going to do for me, type of thing. OK. Well, you know, this is another example of a site that hasn't really uh, been responsive or mobile optimized. It's, uh, and just there. But this one uh, it caught, stuck out in my mind because they have the small text. I want to go in and read it. And um, on the main side, they have this little thing. You scroll down, it pops out. You know, you got the bottom page, okay. Here's a nice little in your face. Someone tried to entice you, a free bonus gift, all that. That's you know, all well and good. But on the mobile site, you try to go in and suddenly, whoa, <laughs> I can't do anything. I can only just try to get back and try to get back in so I can't quite read and go back in again and his, he really needs to work on uh, something else for mobile. Uh, at the very least hide that blue box because uh, as it is, it's basically not functional. Oh, well maybe we need to end up. Yeah. Well I just wanted to illustrate that to show that some of the things can work really well on desktop. Again, not Everything on desktop works on mobile. You need to analyze the two separately. That's the point I was trying to make with this one. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Well, guys, we've used up our hour, so I think we're going to call it wraps. We covered a lot of websites. We covered a lot of ideas. Certainly, uh, Andrew and I are available for personal conversation after this uh, to talk about what uh, questions that you have in addition to your website. And I'd like to point out, too, that we have some great resources on our website. Uh, the, um, if you are new uh, into building a website or you're stepping into the role of getting another website, this download, so, so you need a website, what to do first on the Clark Incorporated uh, uh, website, uh, bebetterdomore.com. You can see it's right on the home page. You can't miss it. And then I've got an e-book, one of the many, just like uh, Clark Incorporated. This one's called The 30 Greatest Lead Generation Tip, Tricks, and Ideas. And it just gives you really a formula and some best practices. Uh, and that is available on my resources page, uh, my website, relaunchyouoff.com. So we will be sending this presentation and the links to these ebooks to you in your email. So keep an eye open for them. And we will make this recording available, too. So you guys can check it out if you want to watch it again or share it with other people. We would definitely love that. So I think that's a wrap for me, Andrew. Any last words from you? Uh, no, I think we covered it. It's been a good hour. I hope it's been uh, educational and useful. And uh, always free to give Marguerite or um, that's like Clark Incorporated a call for any more help or questions or any deeper analysis you may want. Okay, guys, I'm signing off. Y'all have a terrific day.